address. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna have you take some out and come towards me. Kill me, bro. Kill me, brother. What's going on, guys? It's Friday, July 12th. Beautiful day here. And today I'm going to talk about something that I seen yesterday that I was really, really disturbed by. It's a video that I was watching last night. And the only reason I'm talking about this is because this happened in my hometown, Buffalo, New York. And it happened on the same streets that I'm familiar with, right? Been in this area millions of times. You know, it's very, very close to my house where I lived at, or one of my houses that I lived at. And um, it was a, a guy that got pulled over. And um, he's a 25 year old guy. And he had a kid that was like six years old that was sitting in the front seat and a cop told him, told the guy that he pulled him over because his tents were too dark and basically just a routine you know this stuff happens every day all day cop sees you your tents is um dark or maybe you just wanted to pull them over whatever the case or whatever right so they go through the typical routine license registration and he gives them his phone and says it's on his phone right so I think on his phone, it's like, <laughs> it's like a, a license or whatever, but it's not his. So he's trying to talk his way out of this thing. He's trying, you know, he's continuing to try to talk his way out of, out of this thing. The, uh, the second cop is on the other side with the kid, basically, you know, just kind of playing, you know, good cop, bad cop, basically. The cop comes back, it's like, yo, listen, this doesn't match you. First off, he's going to get in trouble. He's going to get a ticket because he has a, you know, a minor sitting in the front seat that should not be sitting in the front seat. And as you're watching this guy, you know, he's he's jittery. He's saying, you know, he doesn't live in Buffalo. He's saying he lives in Georgia. He's just very suspicious, you know, as the you know, as the encounter is continuing to happen, you know? And the cop goes back, comes back and says, hey, look, I can't find any history of your driver's license or whatever, you step out the car. So the guy says, oh, okay, let me pull up, let me put my phone down. And he proceeds to putting his car in drive and driving off with the cop on the car. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna have you take some out and come towards me. Okay. We're gonna try and run your name a different way and see if I can find it pop up some other way. Okay, for sure. You can put the phone down though. Right. You're gonna kill me, bro. So this guy pulls off with the cop on the car. And the cop immediately says, yo, you're gonna kill me. Like it's terrifying. Like it's terrifying you see this. This is real life. You're watching this. And the guy is driving. Now mind you, the door is open. The guy is driving, the kid is on the passenger side. Somehow, some way, the cop hits the guy and pulls out his gun and shoots the guy and they both fall out the car. And you watch and you can see this. <laughs> so link in my bio, link it in the, in the description. You can actually see this. Now, when I watched it over three, four times, the first thing the cop does is he runs down the street to see if the kid is okay. Wyoming, Tim Gator, shots fired. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. I got you, I'll get it. I got it, I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get you okay? Yes. Okay, you're okay. The kid is okay. The kid says, um, where's my phone? <laughs> like, kid you could have been really you could have been killed 
not just by a crash, but it, say the car went into traffic. It was a box truck that was coming as well. Like, kid could have been killed and he's talking about his phone. The guy is laying in the street, leaking, because he's been shot several times and he winds up dying. He winds up dying. What I wanna say about this guy is, man, that was super selfish, man. That was fucking selfish to put the cop's life in danger, to put the kid's life in danger, and to even put your own life in danger. So I went and read the description about, you know, this video. And in the description, it tells the guy's name. It tells the guy, it tells that this guy had a prior case of shooting in the air or something like that. And in the car, they found a nine millimeter under the seat. So basically the guy had an open case. The reason why he did it because he had an open case and he had another, he had a gun on him. Now, here's the, here's the thing, man. This guy, 25 years old. Now, if you've watched any of my videos, if you follow my story up until this point, I used, I was a professional basketball player in 2004 when I was 24 years old and I got cut from my team in Argentina. At 25, I was lost. I came back to Buffalo, I was lost. 26, I found myself in federal prison. No, no, 20, I mean, yeah, 26, um, I get in trouble. 27, I found myself in federal prison. Now, I'm 44. I have turned this shit completely around. Like I have became a person that is putting value and impact into the world. And my story's turning into a hero story. And this guy could have did the exact same thing. He made such a bad decision, it ended his life. And it's no more that can possibly happen for him. Um, this shit is, it's bothering me so much because I see so many young people and so many people just make decisions that just, you can't come back from. And it's a split decision where it's like, okay, I'm gonna go to jail. But it's also the accountability, right? He didn't want to take account of like, it, nothing good was going to happen for, for him. Where, the, where did he think he was gonna drive to? So you drive off, just because you drive, dri just because you drove off, if you if you don't get shot and die, you're gonna get attempted murder of a police officer. Now and the gun. Now you're in a, a even more world of tr world of trouble. And man, like I believe all of us have a hero story in us if we can make it past these villainous times. Because he's a fucking villain, you know. He's a villain. He died a villain. I'm working on this framework um, called the hero story, starting from people's origin and, and going through them telling their hero story. Because if you look at my YouTube right now, that's my hero story. I started from, you know, my first video is my new life in Cartagena. My second video is 9,000 some odd days of healing, basically from my childhood where I'll go back into my neighborhood and, and just, take in what I feel about my experiences. I, I, you know, it's a reason why my channel is structured the way it is, because I'm telling a hero story. I'm telling a story of building a startup and how hard it is for a felon. But every day, now I'm building my hero story. 
to overcome those things. And that's what I believe everybody can do is build their own hero story. So I'm building a framework called the hero story framework. That is just, man, that, that, that video bothers me so much, man. That situation bothers me so much because I see it time after time, like young people just ruining their lives when it, they don't have to. They don't have to. One mistake does not define you. Two mistakes does not define you. Three mistakes does not define me. You still can overcome. Ah, oh, man. Man, I just, I hate to see young lives just completely wiped off of the face of the earth because they made a mistake, you know? More of the story, man, we have to do better. Look, you should start telling your hero story. And that's the video for today.